In today's video, I'm going to be painting up the Space Marine half of the Leviathan box set. I will be painting up these Space Marines as Crimson Fists. Why? Because they were the original chapter from Rogue Trader way back in the 80s. They also have a very simple color scheme that is effective yet striking. I used to paint my Space Marines with the traditional base coat, wash, and highlight system. But I'm going to go modern this time and use Army Painter Speed Paints and other time-saving techniques that I learned along the way. If you're not interested in Crimson Fist, there are other colors that you can paint as base colors for other chapters. See the video on the upper right hand corner. How long does it take to paint up this entire half box? Stay tuned to find out. Regardless of the chapter that you're painting, you'll want to prime everything black first. You can do this with an aerosol can or as you see here, I usually use an airbrush and an airbrush primer and I make sure to prime all the models all the way around, up and down, underneath. Be sure to get full coverage. This is particularly useful on the Dreadnought, which is a fairly large model and doing it with an aerosol primer or an airbrush really saves time. Next, you'll want to zenithal highlight your models. What does this mean? Usually, either use a white aerosol primer or an airbrush with a white primer and spray the models from a 45 degree angle all the way around. This gives it a diffuse light look as if light is bathing down on the model from all the way around it. It will give you a lighter, brighter top surface for the speed paints and the lower areas and recesses will be black to represent shadow. The primary color for the Crimson Fist is a dark blue and for this I'm going to use Highlight Blue which is a speed paint from Army Painter and I apply this straight up through an airbrush. I do not mix it with any flow improver or anything else. I put it straight into the airbrush and then I paint it onto all the models. Now in areas where I know it's going to be a different color, for instance the Crimson Fist have their left fist painted in red. I try to avoid those areas with my airbrush. I don't paint them blue. But if I do get some blue on it, it really isn't a big deal, which I will show you later on. This blue is going to go on basically all the models except two. And those two are the Terminator Librarian and the Biologist. For the Biologist, he wears white armor, so we'll just leave him be. Regardless of the chapter that you're painting, librarians always wear light blue armor. And for this, I'm going to be combining magic blue with holy white. Three parts magic blue with one part holy white gives you a lighter tinge of blue. When you shoot this out of an airbrush or apply it with a brush, you get this color on the librarian's armor. Next, I'm going to dry brush some highlights onto the armor. And for this, I'm going to use electric blue and a makeup brush like this. Get rid of most of it and then after that dry brush it vigorously onto all the models. Now it may seem redundant to highlight something that is speed painted but for this particular color as you can see here if you do not highlight it it looks really dark. As you can tell from a lot of my videos I am not a huge fan of highlighting but sometimes it is important and if you do have to highlight honestly just dry brush it. It works really well and it's a lot less time consuming than trying to apply highlights with a regular brush. For the librarian, I use Void Shield Blue as my dry brush color because the armor starts out fairly light to begin with. This is a lighter shade of blue and it works really well as a highlighting color when you dry brush it on. Next comes one of the more tedious steps, but it is necessary. Since we're going to be using mainly Army Painter Speed Paints, there will be areas that are not blue that you would have to go over and cover up with white. You want to do this with matte white from Army Painter, which is a regular acrylic paint. And then you would just go back and through any areas that you know is going to be a different color. For instance, if it's going to be red, if it's going to be silver, black, or any of the other colors, go in and apply white to those areas. This is going to take a while, so take your time and just kind of work through it. It took me about an hour to work through the 25 models and I applied white onto areas such as cloaks, the Imperial Aquila on the chest, any of the emblems on the shoulders, the skin areas, swords, guns, also on the bases of several of the models. There are some basing pieces that I also painted white. 
what makes this step tedious is that you're just applying one color onto all the models and they look very monotonous. So you just have to grin and bear and just go through it the best you can. Listen to a podcast, drink some coffee, and just take your time through it. Even if you have to break it up into a few sessions, go ahead and do that and just tough it through. Some notable areas that you want to paint white, especially with Crimson Fist, are any of the left fists because that's the main area that will get the crimson for the crimson fist. And also if you're painting veterans, their right fist is also going to be red. So you want to paint that white in preparation to put red later on. The dreadnought is not terribly different than the rest of the miniatures. You want to paint the insignias and all the little things as well. And also what I also do is I paint both arms white in preparation to put red on them to give them the crimson fist effect. Use a smaller detailing brush to apply white onto smaller areas. For instance, the lenses on the helmets and also to touch up any mistakes or areas that you weren't able to reach before. Before we start with the rest of the speed paints, you'll want to go back with the detailing brush and Hylord Blue and just touch up areas that you may have overshot with your white. This does happen a little bit, so just go ahead, go back and tidy up areas and make all the demarcation lines nice and neat before we start diving into the rest of the speed paint colors. If you're touching up your librarian, just remember that it's three parts magic blue with one part holy white to give it that lighter shade of blue. Now on to the fun part. We're going to be putting down Ami Painter speed paints. You'll want to start with the metallics and the lighter colors and then work your way to the darker colors later. This allows you to touch up as you go a lot easier. I'm going to be starting with Army Painter Metallic Silver Paints. In order to get the gunmetal look that I would get with the regular metallics, I mix equal parts broadsword and polished silver speed paints. I apply this onto the Imperial Achilles on their chests, the Gatling guns, any of their insignias, the swords, the gun muzzles. And the nice part about Crimson Fists is that they use a lot more silver rather than gold. They are not flashy like the Ultramarines or some of the other chapters. They tend to be fairly humble with mainly their blue and red with silver as their accent color. In the next few frames of this video, I will show you typically where I would put silver and this is applicable to the Crimson Fist and also a lot of other chapters as well, which is typically in muzzles of the guns, their magazines, any of the hoses, that look like it's reinforced with steel and also the axe for the librarian and then on the dreadnought you will be putting this on his gun as well as parts of his missile launcher to make it look a little bit more industrial and machine looking. Crimson Fists do not use much gold but I'm going to be using gold armor which is one of the speed paints from army painter metallics and i will apply it onto certain areas of the librarian just to give him a little bit of distinction from other characters to make the container on the left hand of the biologist stand out a little bit more i also apply some gold in this area and also on this medic symbol which you will find in few places on the model I next use holy white on any of the purity seals and you will find these ribbons on almost all the models. I think there's only two or three models that do not have any purity seals, almost all the rest of them do. I next use Crusader Skin Speed Paint and this goes and exposed skin surfaces. For instance, this Phobos Lieutenant, I'll be painting this with Crusader Skin, also for the Captain, and then the librarian and any others with exposed heads. For the flamers on the 10 Infernus Marines, I use a more bronze speed paint and I chose brazen copper. You can use any of the three army painter bronze colors and I cover them in a video that I'm going to show you on the upper right hand corner. You'll see the differences between them. Really, you can choose any of the three bronze colors. I happen to choose this one because I just wanted a richer, darker look. You'll notice that I used this bronze and all the spent casings on all the various bases as well. 
There are some Tyranid leftovers on the basis as well as all over the Phobos Lieutenant. To keep things simple, I'm just going to use Palette Bone Speed Paint. This gives it a slightly beige look and I think it does very well for Tyranids. Here on the basis of the Phobos Lieutenant as well as on the Captain's base, there is a dead Tyranid. I paint these Palette Bone. You can also paint the skull pieces on the bases with palette bone also. Here comes my favorite color for the Crimson Fist. Their namesake, Red. I use Blood Red Speed Paint and this goes on all the left fists of the Crimson Fist. This gives them their signature look. And you can denote veterans by painting both their fists red. This is something that the Crimson Fist does as part of their lore. And Keep this in mind, especially for the Terminators. All Terminators are veterans, so you want to paint both their fists red. Besides the Terminators, you can make other characters veterans as well. It makes sense that the more high-ranking guys are veterans. So you can paint, for instance, the biologist. You can paint him as a veteran or even the Librarian, like I'm showing here. And another obvious unit are the Stern God Veterans. You'll want to paint both those fists red. And I also prefer all their drapes and cloaks to be red also. I put red on all the Stern God Veterans. The drape on the Biologist also gets red. And then probably the main piece, the Captain's Cloak, I also painted red. For the Dreadnought, to give it the Crimson Fist look, I painted both its shoulder pads red. Dreadnoughts tend to be venerable veterans, so being a veteran, I painted both shoulder pads red. Blood Red Speed Paint also really works well for the warheads on the left side of the Ballista's Dreadnought. And I also use Blood Red with a smaller brush in all the eye sockets of the helmeted troops. The next red color, Slaughter Red, is optional. You can also use Blood Red Speed Paint. I put this on the round purity seals on the models. The darker Slaughter Red is really good on the Dreadnought here, where there's two reds on top of each other. For the various rocks that you'll find on the bases, you can use either Runic Gray or Gray for Gray, and just lay the color down onto all those stone and rock pieces. Now onto all the straps and pouches on the models, you'll want to use hardened leather speed paint for this. This is a great color for the deep rich brown that you'll want on these leather parts. I put this color down on the pistol holsters, the knife sheets, any of the pouches, and as well as straps. The Phobos Lieutenant in particular has a lot of straps as well as pouches, so make sure you cover all of them as you go through the model. I also elected to paint the book satchel on the librarian with this color. It just gives it a more organic look and I thought it would look pretty nice. Moving on to the darker colors, I go with Hive Dweller Purple and I finish off some of the Tyranid Carapaces on the bases as well as on the Phobos Lieutenant. It is a simple and convincing paint scheme for these Tyranids. Finally onto the darkest speed paint, Grim Black. This is a color that belongs on all the guns. The parts that were not painted silver or bronze get black. And this is a very nice contrasting scheme that Games Workshop uses for the Space Marines. And it works on the Crimson Fist or any other Space Marine chapter. I also painted the hilts and the pummels of these Crimson Fist swords and knives with black. Next, you'll want to carefully apply Grim Black into all the joints between the armor plates on all the models, like these areas here behind the knees and also at the elbows and on the hips. And this just helps break up the model a little bit to make it look a little bit more interesting. And it's also a scheme that Games Workshop uses on all their Space Marines. I also use Grim Black on the Dreadnought, especially around the weapon pods to give distinction between the armor plates 
and more metallic looking gun pieces and missile launchers. While painting, don't forget this little homing beacon marker. It is basically a silver part with some black on it. So you'll want to paint it silver and then after that, come back with a little bit of black to give it interest. Now on to some fun parts, accent colors. I'm applying a little bit of orc skin, which is a green army painter speed paint. And I apply this green color onto some of the cables. The green provides a very nice contrast against the other colors that I'm using. And I also use this green on the biologist, mainly on the vials on his hip and also the case that he is carrying. Next, I use a simple blue tone wash on all the powered weapons, such as swords or the librarian's axe, just to give it a blue tinge without getting too fancy. Next, I use leftover grim black and hardened leather and I paint the hair on the various models with exposed heads. Next for the minor accents, and for this I'm going to be using regular acrylic paints, not speed paints. Regular acrylic paints will lay right on top of whatever you put it on, which is great for detailing such as this. I use colors like yellow, blue, green, and I use these colors at random on any of the exposed cables, any of the lighting, and any of the accent pieces on the terminators, the librarians, and so on as shown here. I also go back over the models and for areas that I didn't touch, for instance these silver areas right here, I use standard acrylic metallic paint and I paint silver on areas that I'd missed while using the metallic speed paints. Now for some freehand detailing with pure red and matte black acrylic paints. I paint on this four panel pattern onto the two shields that are on the captain as shown here. I first start with red and I paint in the panels that I want to be red. I can also do this on the kneecaps of the dreadnought as shown here and also on this chest plate on the stern guard veteran. After that I switch to matte black and then carefully apply it onto the second panel trying to keep the lines as crisp and as straight as possible as I go. Sometimes it takes a little bit of practice to do this well but it's not terribly hard. You want to trace around the area that you're going to paint and then after that just fill it in with the color. Next, onto any of the exposed eyes, I use matte black and matte white and with a very fine detailing brush, I take matte white and I apply it into the sockets on the heads, such as here on the captain and also on the Phobos lieutenant here, on the Infernus sergeant and the librarian. Next, I'm going to be using my favorite tool for eyes, a toothpick. What you want to do is use the sharp tip of the toothpick dip it in black and then just lightly apply it onto each of the eyes to make pupils such as this. It is very fast and effective and very convincing. Time to apply decals onto our fully painted Crimson Fist Marines. I'll be following this handy guide that I got from the 8th edition Imperial Fist Codex. If you're just starting out Crimson Fist as your Marines, Fret not, there's actually a lot of decals available on eBay as well as Etsy. Just go ahead and browse them, you should be able to find them fairly easily. Before applying the decals, there are a few finishing steps that I have to do with the biologist. His left shoulder needs to be painted Hylord Blue, so I go ahead and do that, and then I match his left shoulder the same way. After that, I switch to the Dreadnought, and on his left shoulder, I apply a black area here so that I can apply decals on later. Here are the decals I'll be using. I got these off eBay a while ago. I'm going to also be using a hairdryer or a hobby heat gun like this. Cut off the decals that you want. You'll want to work on only two to three, maybe five max at a time. Dip them in water for a few seconds and then let them sit on the table for about a minute. This will free up the decals. Now use some microset, apply it onto the model and then lift the decal off the sheet with your brush and then apply it onto the area that you want. Position it where you want to, and then using the heat gun or the hair dryer, very carefully apply some heat onto the decal, not too much, and this will allow the decal to conform around the rounded pauldron. You will go ahead and apply all the rest of the Crimson Fist decals on all the left pauldrons of all the normal troopers, the biologists, and so on. Any non-terminator model will have their chapter insignia on their left pauldron. Terminator models, like the captain here, have insignias on their right pauldron. 
As you notice, I'm putting on a slightly smaller decal here, but when you switch to the other terminators, you'll want to use a slightly larger decal. This is because a majority of terminator armor have very large pauldrons, and the larger decals just look better on them. This is also applied onto the librarian. He has a similarly large right pauldron. The terminator size chapter insignia works really well for the front of the dreadnought as well, as I'm showing here. I will be applying this troop designation decal onto the right pauldrons of all the Infernus Marines. It is codex compliant and it looks good. I'm also applying this elite decal onto all the stern gut veteran right pauldrons. For the ballistas dreadnought, I do not go too crazy on it. I put some number designations on his kneecap and also on his right shoulder and then I apply a vehicle size chapter insignia onto his left shoulder it makes it nice and striking and very distinguishable if you have any stubborn wrinkles on any of your decals apply one or two coats of microsol onto them this will allow it to dissolve and conform better one of the final steps is basing i use basing medium such as this from army painter and then just some simple white glue or elmer's glue i put it onto a palette use an old brush dollop it all over the base on the top of the base like this and then take the entire base and dunk it into the tub of flocking material it will stick to your base and give it a nice finished look without putting too much work into it for models that have a lot of basing detail like the captain here just apply some flocking around the periphery of it The Dreadnought has a pretty big base, so after you put the white glue onto it, you'll want to put it over a big plastic tub like this and then just hand apply the flocking on. If you want to spruce the base up a little bit, you can use tufts of grass like this that you can buy from the hobby store. Use a screwdriver or something similar. Scrape away the flocking where you want to apply these tufts of grass. Put a little bit of super glue so that it adheres better and then just pluck a flocking out and apply it onto the area. You can do this as much as you want randomly all over the base. The final step to protect all your hard work, apply gloss varnish followed by matte varnish which should give you a nice finished look. Here is the entire Space Marine half of the Leviathan box painted up as Crimson Fist. And it only took 8 hours or 19 minutes per model. I truly love the simple yet stunning paint scheme for this successor chapter of the Imperial Fist. They're a well-known chapter that has its roots all the way back to the very first edition of Warhammer 40,000. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Till then, happy hobbying.